Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Swanee County Board County Commissioner meeting for August 16, 2022. At this time, I'd like to get Commissioner Stapleton to give the invocation and the pledge. Would you all Let us pray. Lord, we just come before you tonight to do the business of the county. We ask you to please give us wisdom as we go through this process. Also, we ask you to look after our children as they, as they have started their back to school year. We ask you to be with our first responders and our military throughout the world. Protect them. Protect the ones that protect us and give us the freedom to do what we're doing here tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Emergency Operations Center tabulation meeting August 2nd, 2022. Board meeting August 3rd, budget workshop day one, August 4th, budget workshop day two. Is there any discussion or uh, motion to approve? Is that approved? No. Motion by Commissioner Land, second by Commissioner Stapleton. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Moving on to the consent agenda, we're going to pull items number five and six. We'll be approved or uh, looking at items two, th two through four, and seven and eight. Is there any discussion on those, or do I have a motion to approve? Uh, motion by Commissioner Lynn. Second. second by Commissioner Stapleton. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Item number five, approval of SHIP annual report and local housing incentive, incentive certification for closeout fiscal year 2019-2020. Mr. Corbett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to pull it from consent only because there's an additional certification that came from the SREC uh, certifying to us before we certified to the state. And it's an additional document that just needs to be added. So. I wanted to have the agenda item B, uh, approval of the report with that additional document that was procured by Mr. Roberts. Any other discussion? No, no, I'll offer a motion for approval as outlined by Mr. Burnett. Motion by Commissioner Stapleton. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number six. Approval of agreements with Security Safe for monthly security monitoring. Uh, Mr. Prevett. Again, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, the uh, has to be pulled because there's some language that uh, included in each of the three agreements along there that needs to be tweaked just a bit. So what I would ask you to do is approve the item subject to approval of the language by the county attorney. Combined with financial terms, I don't do. I'm not into that. It's just the other stuff. To approve. Motion by Commissioner Lynn. Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Well, we got a minute before uh, it's 5 05. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share or add for a minute? Uh, I can add something, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lynn. LTPT, Mr. North local technology planning team. Is that right? <laughs> we get all these acronyms. I forget which one or which, but they got these little cards that they uh, pass out to the schools, and I think he has some extras with him tonight. This is the Q Q QR code to the speed test that we've been talking about that we need to increase our percentage of completion for the DEO grant that we're working on. So if anybody or any of your businesses need this little QR code, it's a handy dandy little thing to take you straight to the speed test. Um, see Mr. Norris, she's got some more. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll go ahead, Commissioner. I was just going to uh, Mr. Chairman, add on, on to what are the other alternatives to do that? Because I've been asked, I know Mr. Norris spoke up at one night in the meeting that's on his page, 
there were other places. Where else can we find this, Jimmy? Because I, I, I just keep sending one to your page, but I, I don't know if that's an overload. We need to get, I think Swanee Valley may have it on their page. You'll make it good, please. So, Swanee Valley has it on their page, so you can go to Swanee Valley Electric, and there's a link there. Go to my page, swaneecountyedo.com slash speed. It's on, that address is on that card as well. If you pick up one of these cards, all you gotta do is take your phone and click on it. It takes you straight there. Or you can actually go to Florida Jobs, to Office of Broadband. Uh, there's about 15 different, but you can get there from there too. You can search it and find it. You know, we've been putting it in the paper as well. And uh, again, this doesn't just help Swanee County that if you take the test, I mean, it's not specific to just us. I mean, everybody needs to take the test, you know, in rural America, even these people from Columbia County. <laughs> Thank you. If it's just painting the picture of what is out there. Yes. communities in Florida, as far as up and down the beach. I get to them every week. That helps to educate the government and everybody else on that. Appreciate you bringing up. Yeah, forward. absolutely. Uh -huh. All right, at this time we're going to move on to item number 9 at 5.05 p.m. We're seeing thereafter as the matter can be heard. Presentation of audit for fiscal year into September 30th, 2021. Mr. Powell. Welcome. Great. It's always it's a pleasure to be here and deliver the annual audit of Swanee County. Uh, we perform field work on the audit, frankly, uh, basically throughout the year. We uh, prepared the financial uh, report, and first of all, a county audit is an audit of each constitutional officer, five, and the board, and then the compilation of those uh, audits into the one report. This year, the commissioners have is 245 pages. It gets more pages added every year because of all of the regulatory bodies. Mr. So, Powell, no, yes. I, I ain't interrupt you. Can I get your name and address for the record? I'm sorry. Sure. It's Richard. You ought to get you to talk a little bit louder. Okay, great. Okay, great. <laughs> right, it's Richard Powell, Allen Jones CPAs, 1359 Southwest Main Boulevard, Lake City. Uh, okay, so, uh, and, and so, as always, I have prepared this uh, handout that has the highlights of the audit and I will go over that and then be pleased to answer any questions addressing concerns of the county commissioners. Okay, so uh, in all the, on page 8 to 10 is the audit opinion. It states that uh, it's a complete audit of the county, the board, and the constitutional officers was conducted in accordance with applicable auditing standards that include the financial auditing standards, the government auditing standards, the federal single audit standards, and the state single audit standards. So there were four levels of required audit procedures. Uh, what you seek in an audit is a clean, unmodified opinion that states that the financial statements are an accurate reflection of how the county stood at the end of the year what transpired financially during the year, you have that highest level of assurance, which is a good reflection on the quality of the financial records and practices of both the board and the five constitutional officers. On page 11 through 18 is a section entitled Management's Discussion and Analysis. Uh, this uh, section contains some required overview financial information on the county due to the fact that it is derived from the financial statements in the interest of time, I request that you read that section on your own and I'll go directly to the pertinent financial statements. The first one being on page 23. So the, the county obviously being a government operates under governmental fund accounting principles. There are two types of funds. Uh, in Swanee, there is the governmental funds, which are where the main transactions uh, are uh, kept. And then there's enterprise funds, which are, uh, are uh, funds that operate like business and under those accounting principles. So on page 23 is the uh, balance sheet of the governmental funds. And 
um, the first column there is the general fund, the main fund of the county. And this fund total assets were thirty million eight hundred and forty six thousand nine twenty five. Total liabilities five million three forty three eight eight four. Fund balances under fund accounting of cash reserves. So uh, general fund had uh, twenty five million five hundred and three thousand and forty one dollars in total reserves. There's various classes classifications of restrictions. But if you look at the last amount, the unassigned fund balance, 21202241 is basically the unrestricted reserve of the county in total, uh, which is under control of the Board of County Commissioners. I always look to see what percent of general fund expenditures that would pay for. In this year, it pays for 89%, about almost 11 months of expenditure. So that's a very healthy reserve. And it has been building uh, over the last several years and that's very commendable. Uh, just the total of the governmental funds of which there are 32, I think. Total assets, 57,878,251. Liabilities, 7.6 million. Total fund balances of the county as a whole are 50 million, 242, But in these other funds, they're generally restricted type revenues. So most of those equity uh, reserves in excess of 21 million have various restrictions on them. Okay, so the next uh, statement on page 24 is the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance for these uh, funds. So for the general fund in this year, the revenues were 30,155,078. Expenditures and transfers, 23,737,291. So the increase in fund balance for this year was 6,417,787. So that is a 21.3% uh, increase. Uh, in comparison to the revenues. Uh, in the prior year, there was an increase of 4.9 million. So for the two years, you had excess and excess of <laughs> close to $11 million. Now that came about primarily through the COVID related funding that you received that hadn't been spent. So, so that type of funding was very beneficial to Swami County. Uh, as to total governmental funds, the revenues were 57,282,090. Expenditures were about 50 million. So overall, the county was positive 7.3 million. So, uh, and all of these numbers reflect that Swanee County isn't a small county anymore. You have, a, you know, when you're into 60 million dollars, that's that's real money spent, uh, receiving and spending. Okay, so on page 26 to 30 are your enterprise proprietary funds. Now these funds, uh, the intent is to operate fully off of user charges. Uh, for that fact, they use utilize business accounting principles, you know, not fund accounting. You have three such funds. You have the solid waste collection, solid waste disposal, and the water plant fund. So on page uh, 25, on slide nine. Uh, for these funds, a balance sheet is called a statement of net position. So for solid waste collection, total assets, 1,578,755. Total liabilities, 1,361,435. Net position is kind of the net worth of these funds. Solid waste collection is uh, the overall for 217,317. Disposal is 1,208,107. The water plant, because it received a lot of grant revenue in this year, is almost a positive $6 million. So it's becoming a larger <coughs> entity. On page uh, 28, uh, slide 10. Slide, yep, little numbers. Okay, so uh, the, the 
here the intent is to op operate off of user charges. So for collection, uh, the the net was negative eight fifty four five ninety one solid waste disposal. Uh, it was negative one eighty six six twenty eight. The water plant was four point eight million, but that was due to the grant revenue. So in these two funds, although you're recording depreciation, the user charges in this year really did not fully fund your expenses. So, uh, okay, so the next slide on page 49, page 13 of the handout, is the uh, table of your <coughs> capital assets. And so uh, for governmental assets, these are kind of like your general fund assets. The total at cost, 161116232 Cumulated depreciation, 75659000 The net, 85456454 So uh, these assets are about 47% depreciated. And now this is a, a depreciation at the true expense, but it's not, always, it's not recorded under fund accounting. But your assets at 47% depreciated uh, is honestly uh, slightly newer than the other counties of which I'm aware. So your assets are a little bit newer. Business type assets, uh, your total cost 14,315,374, net 7,347,882, they're about 48.7%. Overall, your assets are about 44% depreciated, which again is a little bit newer than other counties, uh, I'll say of your size, which I'm aware. And that's probably a reflection on the amount of consistent grant revenue that you've received that's been uh, spent on infrastructure. And compared with the prior year, the, uh, the, the percent was 45.5%, so the the lower that number goes means that you're kind of keeping up with depreciation. The next uh, table <coughs> is on page 5356 is the uh, debt and long-term liabilities of the county. Okay, so uh, here's something kind of unusual. Your debt in this one, long-term liabilities in this one year decreased 33,202,688. So you say, how could that happen? Uh, FRS had a very good year uh, in the prior year with this investments, and your uh, FRS liability increased better than 50% in this one year. I mean, I've been mentioned in several meetings, so you'd say, you know, the contribution rates should be lower because of that, but they went up. So, uh, so your your actual loans and leases, the total was 5.6 million. Compensated absences, 3.1 million. OPEB uh, is 6.8 million. And then the FRS liability for governmental funds, 11 million, 325,772, which is much lower. Okay, uh, and the business type debt, the capital lease debt was only 108,621. <coughs> Compensated absences 164.711. Here you have the landfill liability for post closure 1,381.042, and your FRS liability is 389.743. So overall, you both in the uh, actual loan type debt and in the employee related debt, your liability was substantially decreased. Okay, so on page 106, 107, uh, as I mentioned at the opening, that we were, we did audit procedures required by government auditing standards. These uh, procedures go beyond just financial numbers, include internal control over financial reporting and compliance with laws, regulations, policies of the county. This report had no findings or question costs. The, uh, the next slide shows the major grants that the county had last year, uh, of both federal and state. 
and it, there were no findings uh, in the uh, audit of those grants on uh, the management letter required by rules of the Auditor General. Uh, uh, in this report, it uh, did not contain any findings or recommendations uh, for either the board or any of the constitutional officers. Uh, there also were no prior year findings. Finally, on page 120 is that we're required to perform audit procedures regarding the board and the county's investment of public funds, E911, E911 grant compliance, clerk's court related budgetary compliance, clerk's compliance with state court performance standards, clerk's alimony and child support payments administration. We performed appropriate procedures and had no findings regarding these issues. So kind of overall, the county was significantly stronger at the end of the year with this reserve beginning of the year had no reportable findings uh, either regarding any of the compliance areas or the So be pleased to answer any questions of the board. Are we getting a check for the 33 million? That's all you heard. <laughs> Explain that to me, Mr. Powell, because I, I don't know that whole FRS thing is like pie in the sky. Let's, let's, anyway. I wanted to comment on that as well. Let, let me say something. I, I've followed these for many, many years. Twenty years ago, there were huge arguments going on in Tallahassee over this. Probably they all remember some of that too. But this FRS number isn't a number that you control. It's clearly being controlled out of Tallahassee, and it goes up and it goes down. The last what ten years? It's been an enormous liability for every county, maybe longer than that. But I saw it climb and climb and climb and it was frightening. Um, and it's gotten everyone's attention every year. But when I opened this thing up and saw this $33 million reduction, I don't remember yeah. when this has happened. So we need to throw a, a parade or something. <laughs> part of it. Just, I don't know that you'll ever see this again. That's the state legislature establishes contribution rates, let's say they establish them. Then they have this actuarial firm do a study. Okay, the study encompasses how much money we have, how much we think we're going to earn on it, of all of the people in the system, how long are they going to live, and when are they going to start receiving benefits, and what the inflation rates are going to be. So they do one every year. And then these numbers just do like that. And uh, and I think probably, and they'll never admit it, they probably overcharged in prior years, and so now they're kind of bringing it back. But you and every member pays whatever the required contribution rates are. And the liability, and honestly, purportedly, Florida is one of the stronger systems, but the liability will probably never be you know, I think they'll send you a bill for it, but it's but it should, if it goes down that much, the contribution rate should have been adjusted. I'm not sure if anyone asked that, but it would be a good thing. If you ever had a meeting somewhere, to stand up and say, <laughs> say, how in the world did that happen and our rate still went up? Well, maybe you can explain this to me because we contribute whatever they say we got to contribute. Okay. Yes. How is there a deficit if you're contributing what they tell you you got to contribute how is that okay so the next year they do a study and say well you still didn't contribute enough the age of people is going up and the people are living longer and we didn't do as good in the stock market so so uh, but then again you know that's the reason they raise rates but if it goes the way it did this one year why didn't they decrease rates well, I, just, I don't have, like I said, it's pie in the sky to me. But that. if you're paying close to after your payroll and eviction and retirement, I don't understand how there's ever a deficit there. And the worst thing, I'm glad you didn't ask me about OPEB. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what OPEB is, uh, you pay, you, you decide what the health insurance plan is going to be every year for employees. Uh, there's a law that says retired employees can stay on the plan, contribute whatever the payment is. 
but then OPEP, there's they say there is a, and it's a study. Actually, Larry's had to lobby for both of these issues. So, so they do a study and they say yes, but you know your current employees are getting older, and so just keeping them on the plan is going to cost you in the future. And so they say you have an OPEP liability, but but you're never going to pay that. And if the rates go too high for insurance, you're going to do something to change your plan. So it's again, it's these people in, I think it's New Jersey, it's where Gatsby is. And, and uh, like I said, you know, Gatsby is the one that issues all these rules. And I remember, used to not be a Gatsby, and then there was one in Gatsby. 34 was the biggest thing that was going to do everything, and now they're up to 110. And so they keep cranking up Gatsby. <laughs> so that's what both of these are. Gotcha. I, that's all I got with uh, anybody else. Have any questions? Mr. Chairman, I just want to have a comment on my last and final budget, uh, my budget that the uh, audit report. Yes. And no findings, and, and you telling us about FRS and, and how you compare them to the law of the city, that means a lot to me. Um, yeah. I mean, that means that, that means I'll be leaving the county in good hands and in good standing for these gentlemen here. And uh it, it makes me proud I, I've said to you previously that how you how these numbers are crunched and how, how you and your company crunch all these numbers. That's way beyond my scope. And uh but everything that I hear is good and, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I'll just say that Swanee County over the years hasn't always been in this good shape, but you conservative practice and you know it's the board and that basically does that, that has built up to this level of reserves and it's very very commendable and it's kind of and it's hard to do and maintain in this atmosphere or whatever environment we're in so yes so it's a, it's a very commendable on all of the constitutional officers and the board and the management Mr. Chair one more thing I like so I wish more people when it was in here to hear out in the community to hear where we stand as a small rural county. You know, you'll find it in a very good audience. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Yes. Appreciate you coming. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Slot. As always, thank you. Yes, sir. At this time, we'll move on to item number 10, 505, or soon thereafter, as <coughs> the matter can be heard on a public hearing regarding special permit request. <coughs> SP 22-08-01 by Mary Solick Esquire, authorized agent for property owner Linda Lee, to be granted a special permit under section 14.11 of the Swanee County Land Development Regulations for an essential service, 210 foot monopole communications tower and associated equipment. Mr. Meeks. Okay. This, particular, sorry, yeah, this particular time um, in the public hearing, if anybody <laughs> anticipates that they may give testimony before the board this evening. Would you all stand to be sworn? All right. Do each of you swear or affirm that the testimony you'll give before the board will be the truth to help you God? Okay. Thank you. And as you approach the podium, uh, would you please state your name and address clearly for the record? Mr. Chairman, board members, the uh, application that you have before you uh, tonight is a special permit request, number SP-22-08-01. It's a uh, special permit request to construct a 210-foot uh, monopole communication tower and associated equipment. Uh, Ms. Mary Solick is the uh, authorized agent for the property owner, which is Linda Lee Revocable uh, Trust, Living Trust. The uh, property is located in an agricultural one zoning district located in section 9, township 5 south, range 15 east. More specifically, this would be located at the northwest intersection of County Road 137 and 216th Street, which most everybody knows is Market Road. Um, the site plan that's been included with the application uh, shows the setbacks on the property, the two closest setbacks being the eastern property line which adjoins County Road 137, and that shows a 250-foot setback. Um, 
the other property line being the southern property line, which is along 216th Street, shows a 1,277-foot setback uh, from the tower location. The engineering provided with the application and their request uh, shows that the tower will maintain its uh, required self-collapse distance and as shown on the, uh, the plan. Um, documentation submitted with the application shows that uh, equipment will come off of an existing tower that's located approximately maybe a little over one mile uh, to the east in a straight line if you measure. Uh, that's located a little south and east of the proposed site. New equipment will be installed on this proposed type tower site and it would be built for co-location. Um, if the board so chooses to approve this request, um, it would require the adoption of a resolution. Resolution contains the, uh, the standard language that the board is required on other uh, similar special permit tower construction approvals as a condition that the county would be granted co-location use of the tower at no charge for purposes of locating emergency communication equipment if requested at a minimum height of 90 feet. So that is pretty standard across the board with any other special permit request the boards have. We included that in this proposed resolution. So if your uh, intent for the board would be to approve the request, you would adopt that resolution. If there's any conditions that uh, the board so chooses to add, we would add those and have those approved by the county attorney. I don't have anything to add at this time. Ms. Mary Solick is present to uh, present her request. She can kind of go over a little bit more detail in the location of the equipment off of one tower to the other. I don't want to misspeak and say something that might give me trouble. So, um, at this time, I don't have anything else to add, and I would enter the file to the record. Thank you. We'll take the file that is composite exhibit one. Are there any questions of staff this time? Seeing so, you know, we'd like to look forward to public comment. Thank you, Mr. Beach. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Name and address, please. Mary Solick, 121 South Orange Avenue, Suite 1500, Orlando, Florida. I am legal counsel for PeakNet, who is the tower um, applicant on this particular application. With me tonight is Christopher Bernardo and Andrea Wickstrom, who are both with PeakNet. Um, we, as Mr. Meeks has indicated, we meet all of the objective performance criteria in your code for approval of this cell tower. Do you have any specific questions that I can answer for you at this time? Uh, I got a one. Just out of curiosity, um, Ms. Sully. Yes. The tower you're you're vacating is that peak nest tower too, and this is a better site, or just just. No, my client PeakNet is a tower owner, vertical real estate, and their customers are the wireless carriers. The proposed customer for this particular tower is AT&T. AT&T is located on that other tower that is owned by a national tower company that's 1.1 miles to the southeast. Yeah. And they are, um, AT&T has made a decision that they want to move from that tower to this tower. And I don't represent AT&T, so I can't speak about what the motivations are. Or like that, but I understand. I was I was looking at the the current coverage versus the planned coverage, and it looked like it would increase it as well as maintain and some of the. It, it will. I did bring additional hard copies of those coverage maps. If you all want to see them side by side to to see the increase, I'm happy to pass those out if that would be helpful to you. Okay. I was just asking that question out of curiosity. Any other questions? I'd love an opportunity to rebut any citizen commentary that there might be on this particular application. Thank, Thank you. you. It's really nice to follow a positive audit. Report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just one second, sir. Are, are you speaking? No, I was just saying, okay, sir, right. to take her original seat. Yes, sir. To, if you want to come to the podium, please. Sure. I just have, have a question, so I don't know if you have to square me in for that. Yes, sir, I'll square you in for that. Okay. Uh, Stephen Fontana, uh, 120, no, 21181, 144th Street, Bible Park. All right, thank you. Would you raise your hand? Yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give before the board this evening will be the truth to so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, just one question. Is there an environmental impact statement associated with the tower with regard to radiation? 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. All wireless carriers are required to comply with FCC standards on emissions, and the FCC regulates that. The carriers do their audits, and FCC does compliance audits. We haven't, we're not required to do an environmental impact statement on the radiation because that is um, regulated by the FCC, and there are, like I said, there's there's compliance audits, and um, all of the wireless carriers have very robust regulatory departments that ensure that they are maintaining their um, FCC emissions limitations. And I have, and I. I always have to say, I don't like to say this, I would prefer that it come from your attorney. Um, the Telecom Act does prevent local governments from considering the environmental impacts of towers as they make their, their land use decisions. And that's because the FCC has just taken that jurisdiction away from you. We've been through the drill before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this matter? Is it about the trees again? <laughs> <laughs> Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give before the board this evening will be the truth set you got? I do. Thank you. State Moses, your name and address for the record. Moses Clepper, 14581, 102nd <coughs> And yes, this is exactly about that, camouflage tires. All right. First I've heard, I'm ignorant about a lot. First I've heard that we can't consider the radiation factor. Thank you, Steve. Uh, but uh, still, the cosmetic thing, the aesthetics, uh, they, they're putting those things in here to make money. We, we can have them all over our county. And I'm going to remind y'all in the, in the county, we could, y'all, it's probably too late again for this one. Y'all have had time in the past between the last one y'all let in, the ugly one. Y'all could have uh, changed y'all's policy, our policies. And so, uh, uh, I object to y'all letting another ugly tire come in. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moses. Anyone else wishing to speak at this time? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Is there any board discussion? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adopt the uh, special permit request? Mr. Chair, when I ask the question, this, this is in the south and in your district, so before we you ask for us to make a motion, just want to get your thoughts on it. I'm all in favor. Fair enough. So I would, if you're in favor with it, I'll move to approve it. I second. Motion by Commissioner Land, second by Commissioner Fleming. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Unanimous. Are we already done? Oh, uh, yeah. Item number 11, uh, Adam McCook, Health and Safety Officer. Good evening, Commissioner. So, I was coming today to give everybody an update on the county safety problem or the, the current safety that the county is doing right now. But first, I'd like to share a near miss that we had on the night of July 19th during one of our normally scheduled board meetings. At um, 538, Swanee County Fire Rescue was dispatched to 180th Street for a large tree down. <coughs> um, the tree was really big, so the guys on the truck was delaying the tree to help get some of the tree cleaned up before the county could get there with the tractor and move it and we had a 21 year old employee um, cutting a tree he was cutting the eye level something grabbed his attention he looked away and was not anticipating the fall of the saw and the saw coming down on top of his leg luckily the employee was wearing his um, issued chainsaw chaps and um, you know it saved, it saved his leg saved his life and um, you know saved his career um, so um, I kind of want to touch base on what we're doing in safety in the county and these um, steps that we put in place to keep our employees safe. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about Swanee County Mine. It's um, regulated by MSHA, which is the Mine Safety and Health Administration. It's the Department of the U.S. Department of Labor. It governs every mine across the United States. Swanee County 
mine falls under 30 CFR Part 46. They're required to have two inspections by MSHA every year. MSHA comes in, they inspect the mine, they'll, they'll write citations for non S and S and S and S citations. In the last four years, we've had four non S and S citations, and um, they're not really that serious of a citation that's usually. Um, errors on documents and stuff that can be changed or or minor stuff that's not um, immediate um, danger to the life and health and um, they can usually be resolved while the inspectors on on site and um, a warning be issued so we've had one s and s citation and that was taken care of so um, we haven't had no more in a couple years um, MSHA also awarded our Swanee County mine with um, 6,620 hours of um, no injuries. So that was a big accomplishment for that. They did that in 2020. Um, since then, we've had no more injuries or lost time with employees there. Um, our miners are required to go through annual training every year to be issued a 5,023 form, which allows that miner to work on that mine for one year. Each year they have to get recertified and get issued another 5,023 form. So some of the training that myself and Jerry West and other people do with the mine, we do first aid, CPR, firefighting, fire extinguisher training, and um, we do um, site specific hazards for our site um, with the hazards they may encounter in, in our mine. Um, next, our public works. We've Im implemented high visibility traffic vests, rain suits, and uh, chainsaw traps for our guys. We provide them with all the safety equipment they need to do their job safe and return home the way they come to work. Um, we do daily inspections of our county vehicles and county equipment, along with the yearly DOT inspections on a lot of our commercial vehicles. Um, We've updated our tractors. We've got cabs for the guys, um, keep them cool. Also to keep um, debris from flying up on them, hitting them and hurting them while they're mowing or trimming trees on the side of the road. Uh, I know several years ago, we had an employee that had got into poison ivy on an open cab tractor and that employee was lost time for about a year with um, a, a severe reaction to poison ivy. So. You know, with updated equipment and stuff, we're um, giving our employees a better work environment. Um, with fire rescue, um, we have a lot that goes into safety now. The state requires incident safety officer on a lot of your large scenes like structure fires, vehicle extrication, special operations, hazardous materials, and stuff like that. Um, I've, I've obtained my um, state Incident Safety Officer uh, 2021 through the State Fire Marshal's Office. We have a safety committee at the fire department. It's myself and seven other personnel. We've worked on um, to get ready for an upcoming audit we have with the State Fire Marshal's Office, office to be compliant with their standards through um, 69A, 62, and Florida Statute 633, which is the Fire Prevention Code. Um, we've applied for multiple grants for safety equipment. Recently this year we've applied for a grant for some battery operated extrication equipment and we just applied for a grant through the fire marshal's office for um, thermal imaging cameras to update our 10 year old cameras that we have. With them two grants, if we're lucky to get them, we'll save the county approximately $70,000 in grant money. Um, in 2021, we were able to get a grant for bulletproof vests to fill in our ambulances for um, our personnel to wear during high um, high risk incidents that we respond to with law enforcement and to be prepared if we ever have a shooter event at an event here or in the school system. Um, our department also has three tactical medics that respond with the SWAT team. We provided them with the necessary safety equipment to keep them safe in them high-risk situations. Um, 
we're, we're getting new fire gear. Uh, cancer's becoming a, um, a killer with firefighters now, so we've taken steps to get gear to protect our guys from cancer with um, a gray system that is put into our suits to keep the carcinogens and stuff off our firemen. We now have an extractor and washer, a post fire decon to where our guys can clean their equipment immediately come back from a fire and shower within an hour to get all the carcinogens off of them. And then the fire department's also doing live scan physicals on our staff, on our staff each year that's in compliance with 69A62 on um, Board Administrative Code. Um, I appreciate the support of the board, Mr. Harris, all the department heads for um, you know, being proactive on safety. Um, this just summarizes a small part of our safety in the county. Safety is not all, it's not about one person. It must be done with a team. I say we have a good team here. And um, I'm very passionate about safety. You know, I want everybody to come to work and go home the way they come. So in closing, I'd like to ask permission to update our safety policy and also form a safety committee with some department heads or representatives from other departments so we can get an idea from everybody and go through our safety manual and update it. Does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> I appreciate the, the safety, the lookout for the safety on the guys and employees and real good presentation there, I appreciate it. Yeah. What do you need us to do, Adam, did you say? You know, he wants a check for $200,000. <laughs> <laughs> we like it, but I don't know. Check, so yeah, check out where that chainsaw hit that church. Yeah, that yeah. man was wearing. Wow. Yeah, you can see it didn't go through. I mean, that's, they don't no. jump like they're that tough, but they're, that's pretty tough material right there. I'm basically just asking permission from the board. I don't know what the appropriate um, procedure is, but you know, to update our safety manual. It's been quite some time since it's been updated. We've got some new equipment and new ways of doing things. And you know, I'd like to have a safety committee. You know, get department heads or representatives from other departments to come in, and you know, we approach it from all angles. I don't have a problem. I think you got to consider the board. Well, you just the committee. Put the committee together and then whatever y'all come back, back with the recommendation, we can bring back, bring back to the board for adoption. That's, that's the way we can handle it. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We didn't call him. Yes, yeah. Real brief. Hand. <laughs> I know, I just want to add that when Adam says that he's passionate about safety, he's not joking. He's, he's very passionate about it. He does a great job for us, but not only us, he's he works as much in the parish department, sheriff's office, and everything else. Anytime there's a complaint, incident of any kind, any kind of accident in the county, he's got to go do incident reports and pictures and everything else to, to make sure everything's done the right way. Um, and he's probably one of the most hated people in our department. You know, whenever, <laughs> as likable as Adam is, because he makes people, you know, stick to his to his you know to the rules and, and what they need to do to make sure that they're protected. And not only protect themselves but protect the county at the same time so i just wanted to public publicly acknowledge how good a job he does do and how hard he works for for not only our department but for everybody else in the county because he really does do a great job at it i agree thank you mr chairman i just commissioner statement i'd like to add i, I appreciate what he does also and he kind of gets gets like us commissioners he he gets back the short end of the stick sometimes when, when there's a resident that has a, a problem with something that happened on county property. He's kind of the investigator that that checks it out to see if it's true. And obviously if it's true, then, then we're liable. But there's times when something may not be quite as it was presented. And I just, you know, we always want to do the right thing by the people, but we also we got to look out for the county. And I, I just appreciate him doing that part. Very good. Anybody else? Any commissioner items? 
Any county attorney items? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have one item that I, need, that I do need to address just briefly. Uh, at the last board meeting, I recommended uh, and the board authorized to pay an invoice to CSX um, in the amount of $83,432.93. <coughs> However, I have to report to you tonight that I failed to follow your, your board's action. As a result, um, a different set of circumstances has occurred with regard to that invoice. Quite frankly, I was angry with myself and was really, really didn't want to go into the consideration and recommendation of that particular paying that invoice in full. So getting, because of the totality of the circumstances that had occurred, you know, surrounding the payment of the invoice. So what I kind of did is I just kind of ignored the board's directive to go ahead and pay it. And I went and had further discussions with, C, with CX, CSX, which discussions I really wouldn't call negotiation yeah. or cordial at, in the lease and I was able to resolve the matter from 83,000 down to 25,000 29 dollars and 88 cents and problem is at this juncture I've already gotten a release from CSX uh, for the invoice and as part of our discussion they agreed that there would be no further anything that happens out there past or future with CSX with regard to the rail line and I got the release for that. I also have also uh, asked the clerk's office and received the funds and I afforded them to CSX at this time. So procedurally what I'm asking you to do is to please indulge me and ratify my actions in on behalf of the board of going back to them and uh, getting a lesser sum but I have to do that and need the ratification so it will be correct in the record. <clears throat> well, I was I was pretty tickled when you called me and asked me could we write the check for less, and I was like, well, yeah, what kind of question is that? Well, go ahead. So I was I, I was pretty pleased with that. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. But you do you want, Mr. Chairman? Do you want to be specific on the language you want on this ratification? No, I, I, just pretty specific. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure that you, 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 you ratify my actions. Yes. Yes. We, had, we had said that, but I, Mr. Chairman, I'll say I think he, our attorney also knew how we expressed our displeasure with that amount. Uh, what did we say we was going to take? How many years to pay him? How many <laughs> long it took him to send it to us? So, yeah. Well, the other good thing about this is that if you remember, I had mentioned that years ago they came through and did service to a bunch of crossings and then sent us a bill six or eight months or a year later. And I argued with them for a long time. And we went ahead and budgeted the money, 40 something thousand dollars, but we never paid. It. So when this bill came, that's the money that was sitting aside all these years waiting to see if we were going to get into a lawsuit with them over paying that. But now that everything is resolved with CSX, they don't own the line any longer. We're able to use the funds that we had sitting there to pay this 20 something thousand dollars. So we didn't have to find any other money. To the only that. request I have is uh, the, 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 the the excess money that we didn't have to pay. That I no, it's just <laughs> 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 Mr. Chairman, I don't think I'm talking about that. <laughs> I'm not even going to comment. <laughs> I'm just going to say no. Uh, very good job. Uh, but I do need a motion to, to ratify the actions, uh, my actions with CSX with regard to the invoice. Except That's the adjustment. All. Except the adjustment of payment. How do you want to say that? Yeah. <laughs> do just that with the adjustment of payment from 83000 Four thirty-two ninety-three down to twenty-five thousand twenty-nine dollars and eighty-eight cents. I would move to make that adjustment on the reduced amount to CSX. Motion by Commissioner Land. Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Prevett. Are there any additional agenda items? 
Public concerns and comments. Anybody wishing to speak? No takers. <laughs> you already had your turn. <laughs> <laughs> it, it says in here one trip. It says in here one trip to the podium. Yeah, but if y'all fixed my concern before, I would be back. <laughs> I'm, I'm just funning with you. I know. Steel Moses Clipper one four five eight one hundred second path. Uh, by chance, I was uh, uh, doing some personal business, and I come across an ex-employee of the uh, deputy sheriff or the sheriff's office, and uh, he he'd, he'd been in uh, public service for quite some time. He went, like I said, he's ex. So we got in conversation, and uh, one at least by him, by his uh, description, and. Uh, and he referred even some people in the upper ranks uh, that have the same issue of, uh, it sounds like we as a county are not, are not providing our deputies and some of our law enforcement officers enough life insurance, or not life insurance, health insurance benefits. And I did a little bit of scratch looking. I mean, y'all got the absolute numbers down, but it appears that we pay, uh, about $700 a month for each uh, deputy and uh, other law enforcement uh, officers. Uh, and, and they they have to match, pretty much match that for themselves. And and for for the kids, they gotta add another 700 or so. And for the spouse, they gotta add another set. So they, they're gonna be paying up to $2,300 something dollars a month to insure their families through our insurances. That's kind of high, you know. When you take even that forty-five, I think we have. If if you take that and deduct that twenty-three a month from from their salaries, that, that's that's tight, you know. I don't care who you are, it's tight. So, of course, I'd like to offer a solution. This goes way back to when behavioral health Meridian came in, and again, I know very little of the absolute details, but I think they're getting a pretty free rent space, right? I objected to that initially, I, and I'm all in favor. We need, I mean, the, the drug is killing our country, and our county's no different or exception. But the, I looked into them a little bit, and uh, they've got salaries up to uh, half a million dollars a year, you know, in, in that organization. I, I mean, none of us up here, not even Mr. Harris, making that much money. So uh, I think there's room, wiggle room there. To, and I mean, there's smarter people than me on the money and all and legal, legalities, but I think just by looking at that, this overview, our deputies aren't getting a fair shake. And I know insurance is out of, out of this world. I've never dreamed it'd get like it is. But I think that's one of the primary reasons that we're not, by talking to this young man and, and then uh, referencing to a couple others that nobody argued that. That that's something we need to look at if we truly want to retain uh, good law enforcement here, you know. And so I probably said enough on that. And the uh, that's really all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Does anyone else wish to speak? Okay. Oh, Hillary was speaking. How you guys doing? Good. <laughs> Y'all take one to pass it down? Yes. That's kind of tall, ain't it? Name and address for the record, uh, please. Marshall Beck, 12609, State Road 51, my baby. Um, I'm coming here tonight, guys. Uh, back on set on uh, July the 3rd, we had a uh, Good friend of ours got hurt in a boating accident down on the Swanee River, and he lost his leg. And um, he's been through a been through a lot. Family's been through a lot, and and uh, you know a lot of people don't realize what all goes behind this. But I know, you know, he had to be life flighted, and praise the Lord, we still got him, guys. Um, I mean, he was close to death there, and thank the Lord, we still got him and all. But uh, you know, I sat back and I was at the house. I mean, he's a good friend of mine, and. Uh, his wife is on the chamber board with me and I'm incoming president behind her next year and she has done a phenomenal four years worth of service for our chamber and she's 
she's donated her free time and and uh you know the skinners go way back and they've done a lot for this community that people don't realize um but i uh, i got up one morning i said you know i need to try to do something for this family and so i called a group of people together and we met we met in a room somewhere about 25 of us and and they all come and they listen to what i had to say and and um so we all come up with um you know we felt like we wanted to help the family a little bit so we put our heads together and said what can we do so um we decided to get some bands together we got four bands together um and we we call it this fundraiser rocking for a reason and uh, there is a reason behind it guys you know what i mean and uh we're just trying to help a, a friend in our community right here and people don't realize what a prosthetic is going to cost and it's not insured and what a helicopter ride costs life flight costs out there and you know people people say well you know people got plenty of money but they don't realize what the back end of all this is it's going to be a lot of medical bills right here so we we put this thing together and uh, I, I got with the spirit of the Swanee out there and and they they said that they would donate the venue and uh and uh so we we called some bands together one is the tribute uh trifecta and and, and they that's the Duke brothers 38 special in santana and then hair days is going to close it out for the night it's going to be about six hours worth of with the concert going on we're going to have a big uh, uh auction inside there there's going to be appetizers throughout the night for everybody and then then we close it out that night with a big fireworks show so uh <clears throat> We was trying to figure things out. I, I, we figured we'd come up with a hundred dollar ticket. We know that's kind of outrageous, but but you know you can go to the grocery store now and come up with two bags for hundred dollars. You know, so so we got we got the ticket set at a hundred dollars, and and guys, all the proceeds, one hundred percent. I know what people want to say, but one hundred percent of this goes to the Skinner family, okay? And it's not going to be nothing going to this park out there. They don't, they're not receiving anything. Uh, we've already raised the money to pay for the bands. That's already taken care of. I haven't went to any businesses, or we haven't went to any business in this community and asked for any help. This is all an individual type thing. If you want to go, you buy a ticket. If you don't want to go, you don't buy anything. You know what I mean? But there has been some people come, there has been some businesses that wanted to donate some money to it. You know what I mean? But no business has been approached in this community. So it's nothing we have stepped out of the side right here that, hey, you've done it for them and you haven't done it for these people here. That's not like that. This is just something that, that the, the friends wanted to do for the family. And I just want to get everybody involved in it if you can and just get it out into the network out there and let people know. Word of mouth is the best thing. Uh, we had a meeting Thursday on it, and, and we started texting people, and my goodness, we sold 60 tickets after that. You know what I mean? So uh, there is only 350 tickets going to be sold there. That's all we can put inside of the of music hall right there. So once the 350 is done, there will be no, no more tickets. Nobody else will be able to get into there, but uh, people are people are coming from all over Jacksonville, Gainesville. I mean, they just hitting us up because they do business with the Skinner family too. And, and but but anyway, I just wanted to bring this in front of the board today and and just tell you what a fine job y'all do to start with. Okay, guys, and uh, I appreciate it and thank y'all for the night. Thank you. We really appreciate what you're you. doing there, and want to say thank you. Everybody buy a hundred dollar ticket. And I hate to, yes, it's the third trip. Because uh, it's my memory. <laughs> the uh, same Moses Clifford, the same address. That life scan, I, it sounds like I'm going two different ways here, but not, that, that life scan for all the employees for the Sheriff's Department, I, I don't oppose it at all. But I think the company that's providing it is taking advantage of uh, our government agency. I was solicited to have the same test done for $135. They're wanting 410, so I just uh, ask that we uh, take look look at that. See if we can get a better price on that same service. That's all. Anyone else wishing to speak? With that, we will move uh, on, Mr. Harris. <coughs> Commissioners, I'm just going to give you. A Quick update. Uh, we sent a letter to Windstream regarding the re relocation of that fiber optic cable on County Road 137 and uh, gave them the statutory 30 days to have that relocation completed. For 
these three weeks, we didn't hear anything back from them. And then about a week ago, a little over a week ago, we finally received an email that said that they were working on it. And the engineers were involved. And I responded um, and said, well, that's great, but we need to know when the job is going to be completed because we've got a contractor and his subcontractors that need to remobilize and schedule and do that. Um, never got a response back to that question. I started calling yesterday, uh, called again today, sent another email saying, you know, I made this request last week. What's the response here? Um, I finally got one of these automatic responses that says I'm out of the office um, and I'll be returning. Call this phone number. I've called the phone number. No one answers. No one returns the call. Um, and I'm just sharing that with you as an update because we still have a contractor that needs to be back out there to complete the project. Thankfully, um, we're not under as much pressure as we believe that we were going to be to have that thing completed. So uh, I feel relatively confident that it's going to get relocated, but it hasn't been done yet. And I wanted to share that with you in case you had questions from anyone calling in saying, okay, why did y'all stop? You know, the progress out here, everything's just stopped and waiting. Um, if we don't get a response sometime soon, I, I would recommend that we have Mr. Prevatt go ahead and um, just take whatever action that the two of us can come up with that we think will make a difference in trying to get this thing moving again because we can't sit here indefinitely. Um, that statutory 30 days is ended now. I think it was this, uh, it was yesterday? Yesterday. It was yesterday. Um, my hope is to get a response soon. But during those 30 days, in my opinion, they could have had their engineering done and whatever else they needed to to schedule to have this work completed by now. And I haven't got a response yet. Said all of that. 
Uh, I'm ever the optimist. I believe that it's going to get done. We just need it done sooner than later. I shared that with you only so that you know in case someone's questioning you about, well, why did y'all start this project and it's stop? Um, that's the reason. That's the only reason. Because otherwise, the contractor would have the thing completed by now. They've been sitting waiting for this fiber optic to be relocated. That's the rest of the story. I'm just looking to get a little more light. Well, and I want to say on the conference call, we pretty much exhausted all options before we done it. And he's right. I needed some blood pressure medicine. Get that done. You realize in, when these type, types of things occur that there's there's very little that we deal that Mr. Prevat and I deal with that has any resemblance to what happens in the private sector. <laughs> it's entirely different. But uh, we did the best we could, and then it just it just evolved to this was the only option. Left. So that's what we did. When did that come around? Lisa. Just provide anything to add? Yeah, just you know, sooner rather than later is you know how it needs to needs to be addressed. But I'm confident in our position, uh, you know, period. So right, for that, Mr. Mr. Clement, do you have anything to add? No, sir, I don't have anything. Mr. Spencer. I'll just get points real quick. Number one is uh if you don't realize by now there's an election, you're missing something. I've been on every street corner in three counties, I feel like. But no, seriously, it's a, it's a right that we have, and I ask everyone to please exercise that right, regardless of who you support. It, uh, people have fought, many generations have fought for our freedoms to be able to do this. And on those battlefields, they was left there to give us the opportunity to do what we do. And I, I take that very serious, as I realize all of you do, because I know you take it serious because you're here participating in these meetings. Uh, a lot of us get frustrated on the big scale, on a national scale, of the way government is. To change the national scale, you have to start on the local scale. You change the local get it going right, it will change on the other end. Trust me when I tell you this, but please, please pass the word and let's get out August 23rd and exercise our right that we've been given. Uh, I'd like to say, Mr. Beck, thank you so much for working on that project. You put a lot of effort into it, Hillary, and many others. Uh, other than that, that's all I got. Other than, I don't know what the word is to use, but Mr. Chairman, you look mighty damper tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. I mean, compliment. Mr. Lynn? Oh, um, no, sir. I really don't have much. I, I would thank Marcel and his team for doing what they're doing here for this family. Um, I would like to see you continue this every year, raise some money for a foundation or a you know a, another family hopefully we don't like incidents like that occurring but you know that's a that's a uh, heck of an event you've uh i don't know managed to put together there i know it's a lot of work a lot of a lot, a lot of good people behind you and, yes, and I, yes, I just I appreciate it well it's, it's it's them too you know what i mean it's not just i'm not just the spotlight oh yeah it's, yeah. it's everybody you know that's right that's right but no, that's a, I know you guys have been working hard on that. I mean, that's that's just awesome that we got folks like you in our community and, and, and the other folks that are that are that are helping you as well that are volunteering so much of their time and resources to help others. I mean, that's that's commendable. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. Mr. Hill. I really don't have anything, just to echo you guys on uh, putting this thing together. A lot of hard work to organize something like that. Uh, but yeah, just I always say it and I'll say it again, folks. We, Commissioner Stevens, kind of touched on there's things that goes on around this world that we don't know about. To continue to pray for one another, lift each other up. And you never know what the person sitting next to you is going through, so don't take nothing for granted. And, uh, and I'm thankful again, I'll tell you guys this we just went through budget workshops and I was talking and 
with my wife about this over the weekend. Uh, it's good to have a board. I'm, I'm, I'm just proud to be part of this board. Every one of us. We, we, we have discussions, hard discussions, some things we joke about, but we do it in, in a way that we get business done. And uh, I don't ever want the community to think that you know, this is just a big party up here for us because we take this serious. And uh, if you don't believe it, I mean, just you can see these numbers and, and the things we have to look at and the hard decisions we have to make and we're not always happy with them we just have to do the best that we can and uh, i'm just proud to be part of this board i tell you guys i'm thankful uh, thank you thanks yeah. sir well uh, there's a lot that goes into it if you don't believe me you just see the mileage on my pickup truck i mean <laughs> and my gas bill every week for, for what, what goes on, but it, it's, a, it's a lot of work, and I know we all do appreciate every one of you. I appreciate all of y'all coming and, and taking part in your government, and, and Marshall and Hillary and all y'all, I appreciate, appreciate you putting this together. That's, that's real, real nice. But uh, other than that, I don't have anything else, but I just need a motion to adjourn. Motion by Commissioner Lands, second by Commissioner Lands, second by Commissioner Stapleton. All in favor of? Aye. Aye.